welcome to Awake to Oneness Radio. I am Caroline Chang, your host. The mission of Awake to Oneness Radio is to inspire the world to awaken to the universal truth of oneness. Science is now teaching us that everything is energy, and that energy is interconnected and interdependent. In essence, that we are literally all one. What you do to another person, you are actually doing to another aspect of yourself. And when mankind awakens to this truth, there will be peace on earth. Now, spirituality and ancient wisdom has been teaching the truth of oneness for eons. And science is just catching up. But this, this science, quantum physics, is not really new. Quantum physics is over 100 years old. So this science really should be mainstream at this point, but it isn't. Um, so my goal is to help inspire people to awaken <clears throat> to the fact that we are truly all one. And once we know that, each of us, there will be peace on earth. Today's show topic is docu documentary filmmaker with Anthony Chin. Welcome, Anthony. To awake Welcome. to this radio. Thank you for hosting me. Of and, course, uh, of course. Thank you so much for being my guest. Anthony is connecting with us all the way from France. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. And Anthony, English is Anthony's second language. So, and I don't speak any French. So, <laughs> so he's way up on me because he at least knows some English. <laughs> but uh, I discovered Anthony on YouTube. He has created some wonderful documentaries, which I have had several um, of my recent guests I've got from Anthony's documentaries that I discovered on YouTube. So Anthony, please share with our listeners how your, your, your spiritual journey, how you got to be doing this wonderful work that you're doing. Okay, so thank you for uh, this uh, interview. This is my first interview in English, actually, so it's... Uh, <laughs> First thing, first thing for me. So sorry for my English and for my accent. Your, it's my beautiful. Your accent <laughs> is beautiful. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm 33 years old, uh, living in France, going uh, on a regular basis to the U.S. Uh, I've never, I've never, I never experienced any near-death experience or out-of-body experience. I'm not a psychic or anything like that. Uh, I did a business school in France. My major was in corporate finance and economics, mm -hmm. but I quickly realized that I wasn't meant for these kind of jobs. I was really bored by uh, these jobs. And so I was really depressed about the state of the society of our Western world. Uh, wasn't, I, I, I didn't see any solution at the time. It was during the Great Great Recession, you know, in 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. And I was quite depressed about the state of the world. I, I read a lot about the economics, about politics, about the climate change and these kind of things. And I didn't see any, I couldn't see any solution. And that's when I first heard about near-death experiences and this kind of stuff mm -hmm. on YouTube. and, and in books. Um, I think that the, the first uh, near-death experience was an American woman, Paul Reynolds, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's always, it's, it was always the same story, like they were above the body and they could see their own body and see dead relatives and, uh, and, and they were able to see uh, and experience things from a remote, uh, look in, in, sorry, in remote places, you know? Mm-hmm, yes. Um, I don't know if I'm clear enough in English. Oh, yes, no, you're, you're, you're very clear. I understand every word. You're very clear. It's easier for me in French, but still. And yes, I know. So you have, to, you have to think of it in French and then you have to speak Yes. I understand, yes. What's good is during my own, uh, in my own videos, I don't appear in my videos, so yes. I know that I'm French, so that's perfect. Yes, you're behind the camera, yes. yes. And so, yes. 
Yes. No, no, no. Keep going. You're, you're doing great. Um, what I want to ask is, um, was there anything, was there anything that happened? I understand that you were very dissatisfied with the work you were doing, which many of us can relate to that. And you saw the state of the world was, and, and you're such a, you're a baby. You're only 33 years old. You're, you're a baby. <laughs> you're younger than my children. But you, you, you recognize that the world is in crisis. Yes. And, and you weren't ha happy with what you were doing. So was there any particular um, event that made you really um, start um, researching near-death experiences? No, it, no, nothing particular, but just I was doing a YouTube uh, channel in French about economics and politics. I was living in Paris at that time. Mm -hmm. and, um, it was like very successful. The YouTube channel got very successful, but I, I got no solution. There was no solution to this problem. And there are still, there is no solution still today, I think, like with the financial world and, you know, the how the our world operates right now, it's, it cannot go on like that forever. And I cannot see any solutions on the political side, you know? Exactly. At least from my viewpoint in France. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and I, I, I've always been very curious about everything. And when I heard about near death experiences, I talked about uh, these experiences to my relatives, to my uh, family, mm -hmm. friends. And they told me, no, it, it's just an hallucination, you know, it's just like uh, maybe some fool people or liars or things like that. And I told myself, yeah, okay, maybe. And then I said, okay, but how they were able to see things in remote places and they could, ver they could verify it after that, you know? So yeah. how come it's an hallucination it's, it's, if it was real what they saw? And then I wanted to understand that, like, and nobody in my family is psychic or uh, clairvoyant, you know? Yes. So, so, so I wanted to, and then I, I found books, like in uh, American books, French books, yes. and conferences on YouTube about uh, near-death experiences, about psychics, yes. about all these kind of things, about consciousness, about who we are, about oneness. And yes. then I, I said, okay, the, the solution is here. The key to our problems is here. The key to our problems is not within the free world. It's outside. The solution lies outside our free reality. That was my, my intuition at that time. Yes. Like that, that's the exit way, you know, that's the solution is this way. And I realized that the free world that we see the free world that we experience every day with the five senses is not the whole reality, just a, a tiny part of the reality. Exactly, exactly. Uh, You're so, exactly. Sorry. I was inspired to launch my show. What awake, well, actually, let me step back. Um, what awakened me was actually quantum physics, science. Yes. Was it spirit? I had studied spirituality off and on for many years, but it was actually science that woke me up. And there was one statement, you're talking about the, the, the solution, world solution. There was one statement, I don't know if you've ever seen the documentary, What the Bleep, it's in, it's in English. I don't know if it's been translated into French, but um, in What the Bleep, I saw it in 2007, Lynn McTaggart, said one statement, the biggest problem in the world today is the illusion of separateness. Yes. The illusion that we are separate people, that everything is separate. That, and, and science has proven that everything is connected and interconnected and interdependent, that everything is one thing. It's just one thing in the world. And it's all energy and it's all interconnected. And that has been proven scientifically. So for the people that say, oh, I don't believe in this and that, if I don't see it, I don't hear it, I don't believe it. Like you said, science has proven the human the hum our human body, our five senses are extremely limited. Animals can see much farther and much 
you know, animals can hear and smell and see much better than we can as human beings. And um, scientific equipment can detect things that are around us that we can't see or, or hear. So, and actually, I think the percentage is maybe the human body can sense four or five percent or even less than that. I know as far as vision, it's like point zero 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 three five three 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 something like that percent yeah. of what we can see. So if a person says, I only believe what my human body can sense, then you're negating 99.9999% of what is actually out there. And that, I'm not even, I'm not talking spirituality, I'm talking science. Science yes. has proven this. And even, even um, in seventh grade, when I was studying atoms in seventh grade, my science teacher said, the world is not truly solid. And we know that. You put anything under a high powered microscope, you see these tiny particles we call atoms moving. They're not still, they're in motion, they're moving. And then when you examine an atom, it's 99.9% it's .9 empty space. So, and now science has discovered dark matter and dark energy and, and black holes that we know are not empty. So it's time for the world to wake up to the fact that our, we're so limited as human beings, if we depend on, if we think of ourselves as just a human being, which I don't, I know that we are spirit, eternal spirit, um, but if we consider our bodies as an instrument, it's extremely limited, and we cannot trust that limited point of view. So, yes, 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 exactly what I, what I think. Exactly. So when you were asking your family and friends about these near-death experiences, and they had an experience and they didn't see it, they say, like, ah, they're lying or ah, it's hallucination. But in truth, it's the opposite. What they experienced was real. Yes. Their experience is hallucin hallucination of our own creation. Yes, yes, I think it's the, we don't know what is reality, you know, we experience something every day and we think it's a, an objective reality exactly. experience, but we have no idea what is reality. And the, I think in, to some extent, the reality is something we project from inside out, you know, that's yes. the, the, I think the truth is a, in that concept, you know? Yes, it's true. And it is, I agree, I believe that truly everything, and science, this is also science, science has proven there is nothing outside of us. We are yes. creating it and it's all in our head, it's all in our brain, you know? It's nothing truly physically outside of us. Yes, this is yes. a movie that we're creating and we're experiencing and everyone has a different movie and a different viewpoint. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yes. So many things to say about that. Yes, it's true. Yes. But then people say, okay, but you know, I have to earn money. I have to do my, to make a living. And so this is this stuff, this is very nice, but I don't have time for that. But they don't realize that they are in it. We are who we are. We cannot be so, we have to understand who we are. And there was a sentence uh, in the in ancient Greece that was saying, know yourself and you know will know the universe and the God. And I think this is, most people think this is a romantic sentence, but it's the pure truth, you know, it's very true. If you know yourself, you will know you, the universe. Because exactly. I don't know if I can say that uh, like that, but you are the whole universe experiencing itself from a relative viewpoint, from a human viewpoint. Very true. It's, it's, a, it's a loop, you know, a feedback yes. loop. Yes, it, it is. It's a catch, what I call a catch-22, meaning we create our realities by our belief. So if we don't believe it, then it's, just, it's a catch-22 because just the saying, 
If you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you can't. You're right either way because you are creating your own reality. And what you open your mind to, even if you can't, like you were saying, you're not a psychic. You have not had near-death experience. You have not had an outer body experience. Same here. Same yes. here. I'm not a psychic. I've had no near-death experience. I've had no out-of-body experience. Yes. And then people ask you, then what are you talking about these subjects? You know, what's, the, what's your interest in that? If you, you know, that they, they want to understand. And for me, it's like that. They always want to know why I'm doing these videos and I don't know myself why. So that's yes. just curious. I want to know. I want to understand. Well, for me, ever since I was a child, what society and religion has been teaching never resonated within me ever, ever since I was a small child. It's just like, I, I, I'm like, no, 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 it doesn't resonate. You know, what society is teaching is not resonating. So I've always followed my heart. Hmm. And so even though I've, I've never had these ex, these I've had extraordinary experiences, but I've never had the outer body experience, near death experience, or any of that. But I know there's more than what I can physically see and hear in my heart. So yeah. when people ask me that question, well, how do you know this is truth? I know it's true because it resonates. Now, I like that word. It resonates as true for me. It makes sense. This makes sense. Yes, that other deep, stuff that they yes. were didn't make sense. It's a deep intuition, yes. Yes. I yes. think, yeah. Yes. It's um, you. You cannot. Uh, you cannot. Uh, you cannot talk about these subjects only with the mind, because the mind is designed for the three D world and for the the brain is here to operate the body and to operate in this. 3D world, but we are more than that. We are more than the mind. Much we are, but, yes. yes. But it's very hard to explain with words what we are. You cannot explain that. It's like, it's, it's very hard. That's why I put pictures and, you know, drawn pictures and things like that and music. Yes. Because I have to put emotions in the videos so that people can better feel it, what yes. we're saying. But it's not very easy. Exactly. It's not easy to relay in words because even when spirit communicates with us, it doesn't communicate with us in words. Spirit communicates with us in, in, in feeling. And like I said, I feel it in my heart. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, uh, there was a smaller interruption. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I can feel it in my heart. And, and that's why I said, could, it, we, words actually take away from what we're trying to convey because words are like our body limited and and people interpret words differently yes yes you course. can say one sentence to 10 different people and they have 10 different interpretations of what you just said you know so that's yeah. why it is very hard to convey what we're conveying in words yeah. Do you think that you're living in the U.S.? Do you think that the American people are awakening around you? or I believe the uh, world, not just the U.S. I truly believe the, it's, it's global. Now yeah. we have the Internet. You're in France. I'm in the Poconos, Pennsylvania, and we're able to communicate. I know. What time is it there? Uh, it's 8.30, almost uh, p.m. Okay, it's 8.30 p.m. and it's like 2.30 p.m. here. So here, with some, that tells, also, time is an illusion. <laughs> All there is is the now. <laughs> okay, All the, one of my favorite books, I don't know if you've ever read it, but The Power of Now. Yes, yes, it's next, totally, yes, yes. One of my favorite books, because <laughs> truly all there is is now. It's but, 8 p.m. there, it's 2 p.m. here. It's, it's the now. <laughs> but if you try to explain that, it's very hard. Like I try to explain that to some regular people like, like me. So you're always living in the now. Like uh, 
the tomorrow for you, you are going to live something, but you will be in the now. You never escaping from the now. And they said, no, no, tomorrow it will be tomorrow. It won't be now. I said, yeah, but it's, it will still be now. Have you ever gone to tomorrow? <laughs> Have you ever gone back to yesterday? <laughs> you know? You're always now. It is always <laughs> now. And in truth, that's all there is because everything is happening now. Everything that did happen and everything that will happen is happening now. And now is truly our point of power. So, so a lot of people will say, oh, I want to figure out why. I want to go in the past and figure out why this is happening to me. That's not important. I mean, if a person wants to do that, hey, whatever floats your boat. But I realize that now is the point of power. And I recently found out science has discovered this. Now, I'm not a scientist, but when they say they, they discovered that now is all there is and that now affects not only the future but the past and they have discovered that scientifically it was stephen hawkins um work that has um talked about that and a couple of very um mainstream scientists are talking about how now affects both the past and the present because now is truly all there is. Now is where the power is. So now is the time to awaken, right this moment. You don't awaken in the future. Uh, you, you awaken now. You don't ascend in the future. You ascend now. It's all, and I love the saying that um, the destination and the journey are the same. So it is all right here and now. Yes. Yeah, there is nothing to, nothing to become. There is nothing to become. Exactly. Uh, but it's very hard to understand in our Western society, you know, because we, are, we always want to, to make something or to do something, and it, there's nothing wrong. Oh, we, you, you're, I lost you a little bit. Um, okay, oh. no, it's, just, it's, okay. it's just your internet connection went out a little bit. I mean, it's just, yes. uh, it's, it's my... the internet. We can't do too much, and you're all where you're. How many thousands of miles away? <laughs> can you hear me now? Or? I can hear you. You're good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just, so I just forgot what I was saying. Of course. No, it's you. Like, were, well, let's yeah. see. You were saying um, it's hard. You were talking about how it's hard for soci in society because. Um, uh, yeah. What you were saying. Yes. yes, you were yes, talking, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, because we, we, it's actually not, yeah, there's nothing wrong in doing things and achieving uh, things like in life, but we have to do it from a place of uh, beingness, you know. We have to feel, we have to, the intuition comes first, the, the feeling and the intuition comes first, and then you design what you have to do with the mind. Uh, with your mind, but the mind come after that to design the the project, but the intuition has to come first and you have to it's like I do when I make videos or documentaries. I just feel it that I started this u s uh, this uh, YouTube channel because I just felt it it was I had to do it. there was no reason no not, nobody was waiting for me. No money was waiting for me. Nothing in the U.S. or anywhere else was waiting for me, but I just had to do it. And you cannot explain that to your family or surrounding or even your friends sometimes. You just yeah. cannot explain why you're doing what you're doing, but you have to do what you have to do. Exactly. That's you're exactly right. as simple as that, I think. Yes, you're exactly right. Um, we all have a... a we're, we, and most people, even in religion, will agree that we're, we're soul having a temporary human experience. And it's our soul that will always, every moment, will always be nudging us in the direction. And what we allow is our, I call it the monkey mind. We yeah. allow our monkey mind to say, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Like, you have to kind of get that mind out of the way and go within the heart. Like you said, it's all within. You go in that heart and, and just quiet the mind and listen to your heart. Follow your soul and your heart. And we all know when our soul and our heart is, is speaking. But we, nine times out of 10, 
we say, no, we can't do it. And we just start, keep doing the, the, the what I call the rat race on the, yes. uh, the not the rat, um, what is it? The hamster wheel. Just, it's the yeah. fear. It's because yeah. of fear. Yes. Yeah. We get trapped on the hamster wheel because of fear. And we don't allow ourselves to be who we truly are. It's not about doing, it's about being. And once you, you're being who you are, your authentic self, then you can do. But first you have to quiet that mind, listen yes. to what your heart and soul is guiding you to do, and follow that and trust it. Once you're following in your passion, following your passion, following your soul's guidance, you have to trust it. You're not going to know where it's going to lead you. You won't. No. But you, you have to trust it. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And, but the, the society and, the, you know, your parents or your, your society can be very fearful. You know, yeah. it's very hard to be in faith, to, to be in, a, you know, to not to be fearful because, you know, the, you look at the price of the houses uh, in, uh, like in California, or in Paris, yes. people are heavily in debt and they have children and they have all these things and it's very hard to, to trust. Yes. But you don't, you can either live in fear or live in faith, you know? Yes. I don't know if, uh, yes. if I'm clear enough in English, but it's... Uh, yes, yes. I, I say fear or love, which actually is, and there's and, no judgment. Yeah, Yes, fear or love, and there's for me, there's no judgment because in oneness, there's no judgment. Meaning, you think of the yin and yang symbol where it's black and white and they're equal. So, fear and love are actually the same thing, just different vibration of the same energy. Of course, you're, I think you're going to evolve anyway in your yeah. life, you're going to acquire. Uh, with them and you're going to evolve anyway but your choice is either you listen to your inner voice and you evolve in a much uh, easier way and fun way I can say maybe or yes. either you don't listen to your voice so your inner voice and you're going to evolve anyway but with more suffering and uh, you're going to like a slap in the face every day <laughs> but you're going to evolve anyway so it's your choice exactly <laughs> Exactly. And actually, in truth, honestly, I, I agree with you 100%. Because in truth, we have to allow others to evolve. Everyone is exactly, everyone is a divine aspect of God. Everyone is creating their own reality, and they're exactly where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Now, we yeah. can share our truth. You know, with you making your wonderful documentaries, with my radio show, yeah. we're, we're sharing our truth with the world. Now they can, they can either take it or like say, oh, that's crazy. That's up to them. That's their choice. And what, um, I have empathy for anyone who is suffering, but all I can do is share my truth and share in love. Mm -hmm. I can love on them. I can shine light on them, but it has to be their choice to evolve. And yeah. if they don't choose to evolve this moment, they will. Because they're divine. They're not truly, we cannot truly be hurt. This is just a dream of our own creation. And we're experiencing the dream, but the dream can't, we're, e we're eternal souls. Nothing, yes. it, it's like, can God be hurt? No. And we are interconnected, interdependent, and an aspect of God. And we can't be hurt, truly. I mean, of course, our physical body can feel pain and we can feel emotional pain, but that's resistance. You know, um, pain yes. is from resisting mm -hmm. what is. Of course, and you're free. People, we never know what people need uh, to evolve. Sometimes yeah. we say, oh, you should do this or you should do that. It would be easier, but you don't know what the uh, soul needs to evolve. So you don't judge men, means like, don't, don't try to, to tell anybody, everybody what to do. And I don't want to do that in my videos uh, uh, myself. Right. Like I just, like you do in your YouTube channel, we, you, you, sh you, you share. 
you, yeah, you put light on what you want to, to share yeah. and that's it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yes. And there's and think, not, never judgment, never yes. judgment, just no, sharing. I, it's hard because we're humans too, but yeah, yeah but <laughs> it's, it's, this is the journey. You know, it's, uh, it's not easy all the time. And I myself have fears and, uh, you know, but it's part of the process. And I think there is a divine plan above us, you know, mm -hmm. a very a clever intelligence above us. Who, and something is, is going on century after century and something. So everything is perfect means everything has a deep meaning. Yes. Everything we live has uh, I don't know if my English is correct, but anyway, everything we, we experience has a deep meaning every day, even the smallest coincidence, you know? Yes, yes. It's all synchronistic. Everything, yes. Yes. I don't, uh, it's not easy for me in English because I have so many ideas in French in my mind all the time, and there is this filter with the English language for like. <laughs> you know what's wonderful? I mean, if you, if you enjoy writing, what's wonderful is you can write them in French and stick them into Google Translator and it'll yeah. convert it to English for you. You know, I love Google Translator. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, for, uh, in my video, as long as the people understand my questions, that's uh, good for me. Yes, <laughs> yes. And you, you, uh, your, your documentaries are wonderful. Thank They're, you. Yes. Uh, I really, I'm really enjoying making them. Like it's really a passion for me. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm really glad to see that people uh, find them helpful sometimes. Yes. And, uh, but I, I, I look at a lot of YouTube channels on the, on the internet like yours. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to look at yours, uh, your videos, like the one with Jeff Olsen, you know? Yes, yes, yes. The yes. experience. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're going in and out a little bit, but that's okay. It's okay. You're good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. And yes, yeah, so we... We, there is no competition, you know, we're all sharing uh, knowledge. Exactly. Oh, of course. I like that you said that because it's so true. Um, there is no competition in, in true, when a person, when a person truly understands that we all are unique aspect of God and we all have a mission and a purpose and we understand there's no competition. Matter of fact, um, I am now the new producer of a brand new network called Extreme, uh, um, sorry, Expansive Network. It's, is that new? I have to think of the name. <laughs> Expansion Network, and I'm producing shows for Expansion Network, and I just produced a show this morning, a live show, and we talked about the same thing. We talked about um, the fact that in, in spirituality, some people are looking at it like it's a business and there's all this competition when yeah, there yeah. not be any competition. Like you said, no. what you're doing, you're doing beautifully. What I'm doing, I'm doing, and it's, it, we're sharing some of the same information, but we're doing, we're unique. You're unique. I'm unique. You, yes. Yes. So, and there's no competition. It's just all sharing the truth of who we are in love. That's all it's about. So if someone's in this field, quote unquote, spirituality field, and um, feel they have to compete with somebody else, or then they're, they're not, they, they, don't, they don't get it themselves. They're not no. understanding it. Because the reality, the reality we experience is in resonance with what we believe and who we are. So we get who we are, you know? Yeah. It's who yeah. we are. It's not, uh, it's not about other people trying to get a piece of the cake and I have right. to get my piece of the cake. It's just about who you are and you project that into reality. Right. And we, there is no reality. There yeah. is no others. But yeah. it's hard to understand like that with words. But yeah, no, no. I get what you're saying. And when you're truly awake, you understand it's not about getting a piece of the cake 
because the cake is abundant. Everything, we're all abundant. We're all unique. And it's yeah. not, what is, what is, what is our soul purpose is our soul purpose uniquely. And that is only you can do. Only you can do what you do. Only I can do what I do. Yes. And that's for every, that's for every 7 billion of us on this planet. So there's never should be a thought of competition. It should be nurturing each other and inspiring each other in love. That's all. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we do our best. And I, I, sometimes I'm worried about the state of the, of the okay. world. You know, but after that, I'm just, I, I, I believe that everything is happening for a reason. Yes. In, at our period of in this period of time and yes. I am um, well in, in truth we are living in a really amazing time. We truly are because I truly do sense the world is awakening one by one. We're each awakening to the truth of who we are, like you said, know thyself. That is key. Knowing who you truly are. When you awaken to who you are and start living your authentic life and following your passion, then and we each do that one by one, and we are. I think every day more and more people are are doing that, and I I'm even starting to see it creep into mainstream society in some of the shows that I watch. Because I hear them talk about, oh, I'm leaving that job because it doesn't fulfill me. I'm going to follow my passion. I mean, I'm starting to hear that more and more in mainstream shows um, yeah. in America. Um, so I do believe the world, not just America, because uh, I, I don't think America is at the forefront of anything. Honestly, I think, but I think the world as a global community a global family is slowly but not even slowly it's faster and faster and faster i think yes. it's happening faster and faster every day so i really i feel good about the state of the world you know because first of all i know what it's just a dream it's just a play it's just a movie you're a movie maker it's, <laughs> it's like going to the movies and watching the movie on TV. Okay, it's it, truly, I mean, yes. we can experience it and we feel it, and it feels so real. It feels solid. But science proved long, long ago, we're not living in a solid, we're not living in a physical world. We are still spirit, but it's denser. It's just slower, lower vibration, yes, yes. denser. Yes. But it's already, science has already proven nothing is truly solid so we're not even living in the solid world so so nothing to worry about because it's all good it's all yes that's what uh, people who have lived uh, near death experiences talk about they say that the the reality they were in during that experience was more real than this reality and this one felt like a dream yes. feels like a dream now it's very hard to understand, but as you say, as you say, it's, it's the reality is not real as we think. It's not an objective reality outside of us, and we are just moving in this reality. It's not yeah. like that. We are the reality is, is inside us. We are the reality we project. That was that's that's why I put this sentence at the end of my uh, documentary. You know, enlightenment, the one I did on YouTube. The last sentence is Sarah McLean saying, I am this creation. Yes. I think that's the conclusion that I am this creation. Or you could say even shorter, I am. That's yeah. it. That's the, that's the truth. But it's so short that uh, really yes. true. I like to say, well, there is a, uh, there's a documentary entitled I Am. I'm not sure if you're familiar with no, it. No, I haven't uh, seen this one. Google it. I am by, oh goodness, he's a famous filmmaker. <laughs> he's made some famous films in the U.S. He's an American filmmaker, um, producer. Tom is his first name, and I can't, oh. Yeah, it, I'll take a look, yeah. Um, Shadyac. Tom Shadyac is the producer, okay. is the filmmaker. 
And the name of the, uh, I have that documentary, it is I Am. But I also like to say, because I Am are very powerful words. I Am is a... Um, mantra? Is a, well, it's not a mantra. It is a command to the universe. So if you say, I am fat, I am ugly, those oh, yeah, yeah. commands to Very the universe. Powerful. So when you use the words, I am, you always want to have a positive word. I am abundant. I am love. I am peace. I am joy. That's you, true. They're, they're powerful words, those I am. Um, so it's making a statement to the universe. So you always want to say something. You never want to use I am with a negative behind it. You know, yeah. they're very That's powerful. what we do all the time. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes. That's the problem. <laughs> yes. But when I realize how powerful words are, I really watch my words. I always try to just only use uplifting positive high vibration and it's not an it to me i don't judge there's no judgment but it's all vibration it's either a high vibration or a low vibration mm -hmm. and i want to i want to uplift myself and others by keeping myself at a high vibration yeah if you're doing it for yourself you're eventually doing it for the the whole the world for the because are the because exactly. you are because the universe is inside you. Yes, yes. You are the universe. Yes, everyone is. Yes. Um, yes. And I think the, the universe is the, struct, the structure of the universe of reality is so clever, you know, it's so intelligent that we cannot grasp it with the mind, with our 3D mind, you know. I agree. It's too much to understand, like. There is no coincidence. Everything is perfect. You, it's like, no, it's too much. I cannot get it with the mind. <laughs> yeah. I understand, you know, and I, that's why I say on my show, I always say I try to keep it simple. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I, when I speak of oneness and, and the fact that we are creating our own reality and it's a movie of our own crea creation, I say think of yourself as the projector. You're the projector. And you're you're um, projecting the mu movie. Uh oh, I think you're froze. There you go. You're back. And it looked like you were froze <laughs> frozen. That's okay. Um, but um, so think of yourself like if you're in the movie theater, the projector is behind you. Here, oh, here's an analogy I like to use. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're in the movie theater. The projector is behind you. You're looking at the movie on the screen in front of you, and people search for answers and solutions in the movie yes. and you can't you can't change <laughs> on that movie screen yes. but they're looking they're, and when they need to turn around and look back to the projector if you want to change the film you have to change the role yes the projector so you have to the change has to start within the projector which is us within yes yes within, within. us you change yes. that film okay i don't like this movie I need to make a change. Okay, I need yeah. to go within. Make yeah, that change. Good, uh, and it's then, a, that's a good, uh, a good way to describe things. Yeah. It's, that's exact. It's exactly that. And you, you. So it's like you want to. The reality is a mirror, you know, reflecting yeah. you, and you want to to you know to change something in the mirror and you cannot and that's what people do in life you know you people get angry and they they don't understand and but it you have to, as you say you have to go within and then you're projecting something else because this is just a dream it's exactly and the dream is coming from within you yes, yes. but it's uh, um, i think people need to know that because we need to we need to know how powerful we are. We need to know that now, and it, it's the time now to. It's the revelation, you know. You that's the re, this is the revelation. I think it's yes. to know who we are. Yes, very true, very true. You're, exactly what you said, and we are extremely powerful. We are all powerful, but we give over our power when we're in a state of fear. That's mm. when we hand over our power to the politicians, to the government, to, you know, the people we quote unquote, put in authority. 
we give our power over to them when we're in a state of fear. But when we know who we are, know thyself. Very good. That is, and I think, I'm, I know that's in the Bible somewhere, I think. Pretty sure it's in the Bible. But know thyself is the key. Because when you know yourself, then you know there is nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. Yes. So yeah. please tell, share with our listeners what you're working on, when you're coming back to the U.S. and all of that. Oh, yeah. uh, I should come back in uh, uh, July this okay. summer and stay the whole summer uh, within the U.S. Okay. Uh, I have so many ideas and so many people and so many things to I want. I have so many projects in my mind, so um, I don't have uh, the energy to do everything. So it's uh, it's first frustrating. Uh huh. <laughs> but um, uh, I think I will start a, a big project, a big documentary about who we are, like oh. this subject. And uh, I I will uh, like I will focus on science and mm -hmm. on spirituality to. Yes. To get to know who we are, like we are not the body, but we are not the mind, mm -hmm. we are, and so on. And, and I think the conclusion is uh, uh, oneness. Yes. The conclusion. I, that's who we are. Yeah. Uh, that's the kind of uh, documentary I want to do. Uh, it's never easy to make this kind of independent documentaries, but I try to use what we are talking about like visualization and yes. go within and then it's going to happen and yes well i'm also project. especially since you, you mentioned science because science is my thing i love science. i i love that science is and bridging spirituality yes, yes that's science is now just catching up to the wisdom of spirituality mm -hmm. and and it actually is proving that wisdom Scientifically, so I love that. So I will definitely send you just some names that you might want to think about, especially, yeah. yes, science, science, bridging science and spirituality. And yes. I think that's so, that's kind of what I love to do on this show. Because everything I talk about on this show is spiritual, but there's a, there's a scientific backing for it. Yes. Until now, science was very afraid uh, to talk about the uh, consciousness, you know. What yeah. is uh, this spirit thing, you know, this consciousness? It's a, yeah. it's a product of the brain, but we don't know how. So it was just put, a, put aside, but we, yeah. we cannot put aside it. Uh, we cannot put it aside anymore. Sorry for exactly. my Exactly. Yes, exactly. And now science, I think at first they wanted to think that Consciousness was a product of the brain, but now they understand that con the brain is a product of consciousness. Yes, that's true. Yeah, that's they true. had to flip that around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, you cannot understand things like uh, out-of-body experiences, telepathy, yeah. recognitions, uh, things like that. It's, you cannot understand these kind of uh, things if yeah. you think that the brain is producing the consciousness. Yes. Uh, and yeah. other things too. Yes. So yes, science I think is is already evolving to yes. Oh yeah. Meta paradigm. Meta -paradigm. It, 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 science has made leaps and bounds in this direction. It's just not mainstream science yet. It's a, this no. science has not been. It's not being taught in elementary schools in high schools. It's not, and it should be. But quantum physics and understanding that you know about the observer that. We, science has proven that without without an observer, everything is just a wave, meaning mm -hmm. all possibilities exist mm -hmm. until somebody observes it. Yes. You know, that, that double slit experiment was done, oh goodness, long time ago. But this is not being taught in school. <laughs> so. No, maybe, maybe some people don't want us to realize who we are. I but think so. The whole subject in itself. Yes, 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 yes. But in truth, I do believe that. I, it's, it's exactly what I was saying about the, the keeping, keeping the masses in the state of fear. I believe that has been deliberately done. But <laughs> I also recognize that as one, I'm still a part of that 
hierarchy. I mean, I can't, I can't say that, you know, people talk about the Illuminati and conspiracy theory. I don't put a judgment on anything because putting a judgment on anything is putting a judgment on myself because we're not separate. We're not separate from quote unquote, they are the Illuminati or yes. uh, yeah, yeah, we're okay. not separate. We're not yes, separate. So it's and, all one consciousness. So yeah. we have to recognize that we all need to awaken. Yes. yes. I think in the, on the 3D level, everything we talk about is uh, silly. It's, uh, not, uh, it's not real. Yeah. When you're on the 4D level, you have the good again against the bad and the Illuminati, Illuminati as you say. Yes. But if you go above that in 5D and above, yes. it's all one. It's all just one. a big dream and just just a play so that you yeah, have it's just to... a play of our it's just a play a movie of our own create uh, it's we could say it's a play it's a movie it's a dream of our yeah. own creation so there is no good and bad there is no. you know, it's just all one thing playing this dream having this experience because that's all we it it's just an experience just like when we go to a movie and we watch a movie on the screen, we experience that movie, but it's not real. That's exactly yes. what this, this reality is all yes. about. And, and the people who are denunciating, you know, the, the bad things and the politicians and the big companies, it may be true what they are saying, but they don't give any solution. Right. Like you say, oh, this is bad, and they are bad, they are bad people, and that, but then where is the solution? Solution right. is, is within you. Yes. It's not to 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 try to break the exactly the right. The solution is really oneness, understanding that mm. we're all one, and there is no separation, and there is no really good or bad, right or wrong. Everybody has their own perspective, and we have to honor each other's perspective. That not necessarily we don't have to agree. Mm. We can agree to disagree in love and peace and respect. So that's where this world has to understand. It's not about us all believing the same thing or the same becoming the same religion or anything like that. We're unique divine aspects of God. So every person has to be honored as a divine aspect of God. And even if their belief is totally opposite, we can still love each other and have love and respect for each other we don't have to agree to have love and respect. so it's unity, yeah. unity within diversity that yes, yes. Us to the level of oneness yeah. and peace. yes and, and and when someone is uh, blaming people in front of you like oh they're they this politician or these people you can answer you can answer them and what what are you doing on your level what, uh, what is your uh, life on your level? That, because it's very easy to blame. Right. But what are you doing? Because it's only about you in the end. Yes. And oh, there's a, there's you're a the only state. person <laughs> existing for yourself in the end. Like everything uh, comes from you. Exactly. In your reality, I mean, you know, everything, everyone is in their own bubble like you. I don't know if I'm clear enough, but... Uh, yes, no, no, no. I understand exactly what you're saying. There's a saying that when you point your finger at a person, say, blaming someone, there's three fingers yes, pointing yes. at you. Okay? Yeah, One at them and three are pointing at you. So, yes, it all starts within us because really the world outside of us is not real. It's, a, it's a created from inside. So if there's something that really bothers someone that's going on in this world, then they have to go within and see, okay, what can I do to change that situation? Instead of pointing your finger at somebody else, just say, okay, this really bothers me. So what can I do to help this situation? Because we are that powerful. Each one of us is that yeah. powerful to change. Because whatever we do affects the entire universe. So when we do one thing that we think is small, like just when we say it, just a kind word to someone who's having a bad day, we think, oh, that, that's not going to do anything. It does. 
that that one kind word, that one act of kindness ripples out to the mm-hmm. entire universe. That's how powerful we are. Mm-hmm. So instead of pointing the finger and blaming others, we have to look within and say, okay, what I'm seeing is really bothering me. What can I do? Me, myself, and I, what can <laughs> I do to help that situation? And yeah. sometimes it's just giving a kind word or a smile to someone. Yeah, work on yourself also. I was thinking that you could be on in my videos maybe. You oh, know? I was going to talk But, to you about that. <laughs> yeah, because I was, think, I was thinking, I was uh, picturing you in one of my videos and saying, yeah, it could be this way or this way. Like it's it's like a, I'm, I'm I'm interview interviewing you right now. You know, it's like this. Okay, yeah. I'm listening to you, and I'm, it's like a, I'm trying to picture you in a, during an interview. <laughs> well, what I, when you said that your next documentary you wanted to focus on science, and I know I'm not a scientist, but I know a lot of the scientists. Um, but I'm like, oh, science. Yes, <laughs> that's me. That's my thing. So. I, I was going to definitely talk to you about that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I, I, I don't want to, to have only scientists, uh, just a right. few of them. Uh, but well, every, the, yeah. the important thing is to reach the lay person, that everyday person on the street. Yes, yes, yes. And, and if you have only scientists, they're going to be like, this is over my head. So <laughs> yes, and you have to... If you want to talk about these subjects, you have to get it, you know, the one thing. You have, to, you, I, you have to feel that you get it. And I think, I'm sure you, you get it, you know, you, you, you know. You know. Yes. You just, you, you got the thing, you know. Yes. I think so. <laughs> I, I, and so many people who claim to be spiritual. Yes. They just miss this one thing. Yeah, it's well, like... They just miss it. <laughs> I have to honestly tell you, I was, stu- I was studying, I'm much older than you. I am 57. So I can be your mom. I mean, I have a daughter that's 38 and my son is 34 in spirit. He transitioned, my son, I don't, there's no such thing as death. My mm. son transitioned in July, July 1st, 2014 at the age of 29. So okay. now he's 34 in spirit. Um, he communicates with me all the time. Not that I hear him. I can't channel or anything like that. But in my heart, he communicates with me all the time. And he's the co-host of this show. He told me that when I had a reading. But I was, nice. now I just lost my thought. But um, uh, I yeah. lost my thought because I went off on Kyle. Uh, the documentary, who, uh, what, the one that sings. So oh, the one that Okay, that's what I say. Okay, okay, for me... So I'm much older than you. I've been studying spirituality and metaphysics since my teens. So that was back in the late 70s, early 80s, Mm -hmm. okay? And it it was science that when I saw what the bleep in 2007, so for 30 years I'm studying spirituality, but I know I'm missing something. It was a missing piece for me. Until I saw What the Bleep, which was all about quantum phys- physics, and Lynn McTaggart said that one sentence. That's what woke me up. The biggest problem in the world today is the illusion of separateness. And I got it, not on a head level, but in, a, in my heart. I just said, yes. My soul said, yes. That's the missing piece. We are all one. And when I understood oneness, all the other stuff, Everything else made sense. Yes, because that's the logical conclusion to everything, you know. Yes. That's the conclusion to everything we talk about is this one little thing. Because otherwise you just, just uh, nice words of spirituality, you know. Exactly. If, if and, you're, you know. and you're right about that. I mean, I love, I'm not putting down any spiritual teacher, but not all of them really get that oneness, especially if they feel like they have to be, in competition, because yes. competition and oneness do not go together, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yes, yes. So tell our, please tell our listeners how they can find you, your YouTube channel, and watch your wonderful documentaries. 
Uh, yes, so my YouTube channel, and uh, it's uh, youtube.com slash Anthony Chen Production, you know? Yes. I don't know if it's clear enough, but yes. that's, well, an, that's I have my a name. Uh, yes. yes, I have a link. <laughs> don't and, and I, down there. I, I also have a French YouTube channel, but I don't know, I don't know if many people for, of your uh, audience will understand French, but uh, I have a much bigger channel in French. Okay. an older channel. I, uh, I will put both links. I will. Yeah, yeah. This, so, um, this is worldwide. I actually got an email one time in Japanese. Yes, I did. Okay. I, it was in Japanese and I had to put it in Google Translator because I didn't know. I didn't know <laughs> if they were saying they like me or they hate me. <laughs> but they were, they, were, they were inspired and they, Japanese. So yes, definitely. This yes, is so, so wonderful. Yes. Thank you for this first interview uh, in English. In English. Oh, and I'm so proud to do the first <laughs> interview in English. Yeah. Yes. I hope that uh, it was uh, clear enough. And oh, I, very clear. Very clear. <laughs> Actually, you were clearer than some people in English. I mean, some people that speak in English, you were clear. <laughs> yeah. Very clear. I don't very know. clear. And yes, we could talk about some other projects later if you want. And I would love to do that. Great. I would love to do that. We are definitely going to keep in touch. Now, you say you're coming to the U.S. in July. You're going to be on the West Coast? Uh, first on the West Coast and I think uh, on near the East Coast after that. In okay. August. Let me know when you're coming to the East Coast. Because yes. I'm a East Coast girl. Okay. <laughs> or in Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yes. I'm in Pennsylvania, yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's not very far from. Yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, so let you... We're going to keep okay. in touch. I okay. Have, now, now I have a new son. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I have a French son. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for this interview. Good. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Anthony, this has been an amazing hour. This is so great. I thank you so much. Keep doing what you're doing. You're an amazing young man doing great work and shining your light with the world. Thank you thank so much. Thank you. You too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Namaste.